a leader's interview. The seven questions to enhance your leadership and also evolve the leadership and work-life harmony of the candidates that you are bringing into your team or organization. Now we all want the inspired and motivated, thousands of the inspired and motivated people to bring into our organization. And I believe that most people can be the inspired and motivated when we first start asking these powerful questions to find out more about who they are, what they want to get out of working with you and for you, and then marrying what they want and need with your expertise and then tying it to the vision of your organization. So I'm going to say the seven questions and then let's talk briefly about them. The first question, how long have you been doing this? The second, what do you like most about the job? The third, what frustrates you most about the job? And be honest. Fourth, what's your dream? Now, if it's related to the company and the job, fantastic. If not, fantastic. What's your dream? Then we do a leaders nicely. How do you learn best? Then we do the leader seven. What are your top two professional languages so I can speak them to you consistently? And then lastly, share what the job is. Can you do it? And what do you want to get most out of working here and for and with me and us? Those are the seven. Let's talk very briefly about each of them. How long have you been doing this? Whether they say 40 days or 40 years, the answer is simple. It's something that tees it up and allows them to hit that out the park with a definite answer. This is how long I've been doing it. Now, some employers may like people that have been doing it for a while. That can gauge experience, but it doesn't all, always resonate with work. And if they're really good at it, you can do something for a long time and not be very good at it. Some employers like bringing in someone that's fresh, that can learn some new things, and a lot of companies have created their own universities. So they get to hire great people and then teach them the skills necessary to succeed in their environment. There's nothing wrong with having done it for a while and being a veteran. There's value in that. And that's what leads into the next few questions. What do you like most about the job? It's always surprising what people will say. Sometimes you might get the answer that you're expecting to hear. Other times people will blow your doors off with what really excites them about the job. Does your company have that to offer? If it exists, great. If not, does it make sense to put that in? What frustrates them most about the job? And be honest. That be honest with an exclamation point matters because what it tells them is that you value being real. You really want to hear it and you're giving permission for them to say something that may be hard for them to say or hard for you to hear. So what does frustrate them most? The typical answer I get when I get to bring people into my company, into my mission, into my baby, is that it frustrates them when they don't have the tools to be successful or they don't meet the expectations of the boss or the team or the organization. So whatever their answer, is your organization, is your team set up to allow them to be successful and get the recognition and affirmation so many would like to hear? The next one is very powerful. What's your dream? See, that's really huge there because this is a question that mostly gets asked when we're kids and when we're in school and when we hit the real world, when we get into business, we start having families. Boy, this, this, this question dissipates rapidly. Asking candidates, what's your dream? And then tailoring that question to say, if it's related to the job, great. If it's not, great. I want to hear it. Some people may shock you with what they say, whether it's a side hustle or business, whether it's going to school to do something, or maybe it's doing the job that they're sitting in front of you applying for. When you know their dream, at the least, it gives you something to talk about in casual times, in your one-on-one -on -one meetings, to see how's it going. At the most, you may be able to help with their dream. Maybe they want to start their own bakery. Well, allow goody time and let them bring in some baked goods and you can taste test. Maybe there's more that you can do. 
they will never forget who helped them live their dreams professionally and personally when it's doable for you, the team and the organization. The next is a leader's nicely knowing how your people learn best. Are they hands-on? Are they verbal? Are they auditory? Are they written? Asking this question will save you monumental frustration and them frustration moving forward. When you go to teach new tasks, share new projects, you now know their best learning style and make it easier for them. Now that leads into the language. In my latest book, Seven Ways to Lead, I talk about the seven languages that your people need to hear, want to hear, and benefit most hearing from leadership, from you. Know their top two. Maybe their recognition and affirmation and respect. Maybe their flexibility and goody time. Maybe their quality minutes and incentives. Whatever it is, know it. Speak it often, and you're always speaking with their ear and their motivation first. Then it makes it so much easier for them to fall in line with the vision, respect the vision, and move forward because they're getting a need met, you're getting a need met, and the organization and your vision always wins. Lastly, we want to know, this is the job. Can you do it? What are your thoughts? What experience do you have doing specifically what I would benefit and the organization would benefit from bringing you in on? And what do you want to get out of working here with me, for us, and within the organization? Knowing that answer will allow you again to lead with their motivation. And because you're gonna have one-on-one -on -one meetings regularly and not cancel them and reschedule them, all of this information gets to be built upon as you have your one-on-one -on -one meeting. Guys, I hope that this resonated with you because as you're bringing new people in, know that they want the job, they want to do good, they also want to be influenced, they want to be impacted, they want to be protected, and they want to know what the expectations are. These seven will allow you to know that and more. Now I'm sure that you have your own questions Feel free to marry them with these seven and enhance not only your leadership and work life harmony, but also that of those new to your organization, existing on your team, and the organization as a whole. Guys, I hope that this resonated with you, and I had such a great time sharing it with you. If you like this, you're going to love everything at youevolvingnow.com. That's Y-O-U, evolvingnow.com. I look forward to you finding out more. I look forward to connecting and being of value in my trainings and speaking engagements for organizations, for your leaders, employees, and teams. Guys, thanks so much. And until next time, enjoy your evolution.